trade down here. It's going to be at 228. We expect then unearned revenue to go up and accounts receivable to go up. So it's going to be a debit to the AR or accounts receivable. And there's going to be a credit to the unearned revenue. That's going to be our journal entry, straightforward journal entry. Although again, it's a little bit different than you might see in accounting textbook due to that. And then we're going to go to the right hand side, looking at the sub ledger and analyze the sub ledger to see if we have any of these deposits that are in there. Noting that once once the actual invoice has been put in place, then I'm not at a problem anymore. In other words, at this point in time, when I got the prepayment and I recorded a negative receivable, it's not exactly correct because I should have a positive liability, not a negative receivable. But once the invoice is completed, then I'm back in a, in a good position. Everything's back to where it should be because I have a positive receivable and I don't have this negative kind of receivable problem. If I have a situation where I got a deposit and then I had not yet created the invoice as of the cutoff date, the date we want to make the financial statements, that's when we have the problem. So I have a problem here with the Smith Smith and I have a problem with the customer customer one here. Actually, these two net out somehow over here. And then we've got the problem with the Eric music. So that's going to be the 450. So we got the 450 from these two from these two customers that we need to be dealing with. Now, the other thing we got to consider is that what I need to do then is reduce the receivable down to zero. When I reduce the receivable, if you're using something like QuickBooks software, they're going to force you to put something to the customer item. I don't really want to put something to the customer item here or here because I don't want to mess up the normal bookkeeping process. The normal bookkeeping process works fine this way.